Pfizer has now submitted an emergency use authorization request to the FDA just this afternoon. If approved, this could mean the shots will be available as early as mid-December. Quick Takes Madison Mills is here to tell us more on what this could mean as virus cases are surging. Madison, to start us off, tell us about the timeline here. If the shot is available in December, then when do the effects, when do we start to feel the effects of that on these surging coronavirus numbers? Right, Renita. So when we heard that Pfizer officially submitted its request for an emergency use authorization, that's really exciting. That's big news. But there's still a waiting period here that we need to point out. We're going to have to wait at least three weeks before the FDA has a group of outside advisors meeting from December 8th through December 10th. And then that group of people is going to vote on whether Pfizer's vaccine can actually be authorized for use at the end of that three-day period. So some people are saying, oh, three weeks, that's a long time to wait. But actually, historically, it takes anywhere from six to 12 months for the FDA to approve a federal emergency use authorization. So this still is an accelerated timeline. But also, the FDA is doing this intentionally. Renita, all week, we've been talking about the importance of transparency and trust building surrounding these vaccines. The FDA wants to make sure that people know they are taking their time when they're looking at the data that Pfizer gathered in these clinical trials to make this decision. I'm glad you noted that lightning speed that we're working with, but we know that Pfizer vaccine is 95 percent effective. Can you contextualize that percentage for us? What's the next, uh, the net effect rather, of that percentage? Right. So Bloomberg opinion columnist Justin Fox wrote extensively about this data this week. So I'm going to try to give you kind of the uh, chill version of these numbers as much as I can here. Uh, Essentially, the Pfizer vaccine brings the COVID fatality rate down from 1% to 0.05%. And this is a big deal, right? That's kind of the difference between my entire high school and a class in my high school. It's a huge drop in numbers. Uh, If we'd had this Pfizer vaccine throughout the pandemic, for example, we we know we're at over 250,000 deaths nationwide. That number would have plummeted to 12,500. And the reason that we're digging into this data and pointing this out is because it really is a big deal that Pfizer's vaccine is this effective. When I interviewed Dr. Fauci earlier on in the pandemic, he said he'd be over the moon if there was a vaccine that was anywhere from 50 to 70 percent effective. And now we're hearing multiple companies come forward with vaccines that are over 95 percent effective. So this is a big deal. Thanks for breaking down those numbers. And given how many people have already contracted the virus in the United States, does herd immunity play into effectiveness of any potential vaccine at all? Right. So public health experts are saying that we need to get to a point where at least 70 percent of Americans are immune to the virus for us to be able to move forward from this pandemic, something we're all wishing for right now. Right. So by the time these vaccines are doled out, experts are saying that about 30 percent of Americans will have already contracted the virus. So that group is likely to have some sort of COVID-19 immunity, meaning that only about 40 percent of Americans will have to take a vaccine to get to that 70 percent threshold, which will really ensure that we can move forward from this virus, according to a lot of public health experts. Well, Madison Mills, thank you so much. And this comes just a week before Thanksgiving, an event that will certainly, almost certainly cause cases to surge. We really do appreciate that report. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.